if you find yourself with this internal question of, should I quit my coaching business? Then you are not alone. This episode is for you. I'm going to help you really figure out what next steps are best for you to take if you've been wrestling with this question. Welcome coaches to another episode of the BDC. I'm going to give some real honest thoughts today around a question I had from actually just a social media follower. We were exchanging DMs and she basically had shared, I've been doing this for about a year or two and I haven't really signed clients enough to justify, um, you know, or call myself a real business. And she just asked the question kind of out of like desperation, Amanda, should I just quit my coaching business? And my heart hurt. Uh, And it also inspired me to have this conversation with you because you might be like her. You might have started this thing. You started calling yourself a coach. You feel like you've been chipping away at it. You don't really have a full client roster, maybe even clients to speak of. And you sometimes find yourself teetering this, should I just go find a real job? Should I just give up this coaching thing altogether? And so today I just want to hit on some of the truths around this and also call out some of the things that might be holding you back from actually creating success. And I'm going to be for real here is I believe everybody can have success. So I don't think that it's a matter of um, I don't have clients, there's nobody out there. I think this is an opportunity for you to turn inward and really ask yourself, am I doing some of the things that are going to be required of me in order to create success? The first is just this kind of mindset of outcome of commitment. I remember back to when I left my teaching business, I left, or my teaching business, my teaching job, I left and I realized it now, but I didn't necessarily realize when I was in it. When I left, Going back wasn't an option. I didn't say, well, if I have to go back or, you know, I'll do this. And if I don't do this, then I'll go back to teaching. For me, I was steadfast focused on taking my skills and finding a way to repurpose them in a different way that allowed me to create more money in my life, but honestly just gave me the total freedom to do what I wanted, which at the time was to at least like be part-time with my kiddos and help raise them before someday maybe having more of a full-time business. And so I find a lot of the language, even with some of my existing clients that I have to call out is they will say the same thing unconsciously or consciously going back to what was is still an option. And that is completely sabotaging because you're still saying like I'm one foot in and I'm one foot out. You haven't energetically committed to saying I will create success in this coaching practice. And if you're still looking at jobs, if you're still searching, and I'm not saying leave something blind and, you know, a six figure salary and go all in. But as you're building the coaching practice, commit to that becoming the full time thing. I have plenty of uh, had conversations with people that are making, you know, at least 30 or 40 K in their coaching business. They're like, yeah, but I was making 60 K as a teacher or 60 K doing this. I, I don't know if I should go back. It's like, that is such limited fixed mindset. The question I'd be asking is what do I need to do differently to generate 60 K extra? What do I need to do to double? If I'm already making 30 or 40,000, something's working. So then how do I double down on that? But what it does is it presupposes there's an out. And just think about, let's say, health and nutrition. If you are fixing a healthy dinner, but you're always like, oh, you know, we could order in, it always presupposes there's another option. So you never eat the healthy dinner, right? You keep falling back to the old pattern. And so I want you just to check yourself to see what your internal language is. And once I call that out on my clients, they're like, oh my gosh, you're right, Amanda. I'm still telling myself that this is not going to be successful, that I can't do this. And that is going to be the internal compass that exists. You're, oh, you know, the, the, the brain is already wired for a negative bias. So we're working against ourselves. So we have to actively show ourselves consistently why there is success, how this is already working. And so for me, the mental shift I would offer is I will make it work and I'll keep trying until I do. That is exactly what I told myself is I'm just going to keep figuring this out. 
I made my first 10K. I was like, okay, cool. How, what, what's happening here? This is awesome. How do I do this more? And I'm going to keep going until I figure it out. And the more I worked at figuring it out and asking myself, like, this is working. How do I do more of what's working? Then, you know, that, that momentum builds and you start to go, oh yeah, like I don't have to go back to being a teacher. I'll run into old teacher friends and like, do you miss it? I'm like, not a bit. <laughs> I miss the teenagers. They were my favorite part, but I don't miss the structure. I don't miss the, uh, fixed mindset that a lot of teachers have. I don't miss their schedule. I don't miss any of that because I get to have all of that for myself. I get to decide. I am the decision maker and you can be the decision maker too. And so that question, should I quit my coaching business is actually already inherently incorrect. It's already what I just said. It presupposes there's an out. It presupposes that there's another option. And I don't, I don't want to go through this conversation of looking blindly, but I just want to make sure that you take the next steps and consideration from today. And you're really asking yourself, am I giving it my all? Am I internally sabotaging myself or no? Right. And then once you can call those things out and begin to make adjustments, I actually think your momentum is going to shift. So the problem is solved, but at least then you can make a powerful decision. You make a decision from a place of empowerment rather than a place of doubt or shame. The next reason that I see many coaches struggling is this. They don't have clients. <laughs> they don't, they say there are no clients. I don't know how to find clients. And I'm going to say something that's kind of annoying, but it's this, there's clients everywhere. Like you're passing them, you're seeing them, you're talking to them consistently. And the reason that they're not your clients is because you're not talking about talking to them about what you actually do. You're not coming from a place of value and curiosity and having conversations. In fact, often most people I, I ask, I'm like, okay, you're, you're not doing well in your business. Tell me more. When was the last time you told somebody you were a coach? Sometimes it's never, sometimes it's weeks and months. And so what we have to do is uncomfortable things to create the comfortability in the life and the business that we want. So if you're sitting here twiddling your thumbs thinking this isn't going to work and you can honestly tell yourself that you've had conversations, active conversations, not passive. Passive is just posting on social media. That's not going to get you clients. We have to go out and have conversations and be in front of the right person. Inside the BD, BDC, I teach a methodology called the V-squared method. And one of the things I, really what I say is you need two parallel running systems in your business, a value system, something you're constantly pouring into your your ideal clients. For me, that's workshops and trainings. I'm constantly creating ways for clients to come close to me. And the other is visibility. In other words, I'm trying to get in front of people that don't know me, pitching to a podcast, going to networking events, um, pitching to lives, writing guest blog posts. So when I audit businesses, I typically find that this is lacking. We think we've been taking quote unquote massive action right? And massive action is the action of discomfort. Massive action is when we could possibly fail. It's risky, but it's also the thing that actually grows a profitable coaching business. Most of my coaches that I talk to that are in this situation are because they're taking passive action. They're listening to podcasts, which I love that you're listening, but they're not doing the work after they're reading books. They're posting on social but they're really not doing anything else. They might've been showing up at networking events, but they're standing around. They're not even telling anybody what they do. So you have to be doing massive action, which requires discomfort, which requires you to kind of regulate the nervous system and to remind yourself why you showed up to do this work at all, right? Clients don't just appear. We have to go out and attract them. And that is also how you show up. You're nonverbal. Are you showing up confident? Are you whispering? Are you afraid to talk when they get on Zoom? Are you like, soft, 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 soft? like that's not what they want, right? So part of it is, to really step into the identity um, of what that looks like. And a great episode is one of my coaching live coaching episodes is with um, Money and Marriage, Karen of Money and Marriage. And we actually audited, I'll put the link in the show notes as well. We audited her entire business because she was really asking this question too. And it hit me that I think more coaches are in this struggle uh, than I think. And the reality is, 
many coaches, I don't know what the statistic is. I can tell you the industry, right? It's like 20 something billion dollar industry starting this year. I don't know what the the numbers are when it comes to coaches, quote unquote, graduating um, from a certification or program. I would venture it's in the hundred thousands, you know, um, every year. That means that there are other people doing what we're doing. But it also is evidence that this is possible for you because of those, there's so many having success. The downside is just because you certify doesn't mean you know how to run a business. It doesn't mean that you're going to automatically attract clients. This is why I think it's so important to be in a community, to learn from people who are already doing it and to be surrounded by people just like yourself that are in the midst of taking action or having some of the same struggles. So if you're alone in trying to do this, I want to invite you to come into our world, by the way, the best damn coach community would be 100% a place that you could benefit because we give you a roadmap to do the things that I just shared and to get out of this mindset of like, oh, is this for me? Can I actually have great success or, or should I leave? With that being said, if you're hearing all these things today and you are confidently saying, I've been doing these things and I've been doing these things, here's the word, consistently. I'm showing up consistently, not just like posting every, you know, uh, other week. Um, and I'm having a webinar consistently, not just one. And then I wait six months. If you are doing those things and you're not getting traction, I still am really curious of, of why, like for me, I'm like, is it a messaging thing? Um, are you not niche specific? There's so many things that we could talk about. So if you're listening and you want to be coached by me live, another great way is to submit one of our live for our, one of our live coaching episodes. Um, but more importantly, just like, let's hop on a phone and chat and see what's coming up so we could really lock in. And I'll put both those links below in the show notes. I still believe that with certainty, anyone can create success. What it might require is dialing the messaging, make, getting clarity around ideal client work, uh, who your ideal client is, getting clarity around those outcomes that you're providing. Because if you feel like you're doing the work, but it feels like crickets out there, there's usually a gap that exists and we can help, you know, figure out what that gap is. Often it's messaging. It could be many other things, not the right offer in front of the right people, not the right price point, et cetera. But I want you to know that I believe in you. <laughs> and sometimes you have to borrow the belief from somebody else in the beginning while you're figuring things out. And it's so great to have somebody in your corner that can be like, you got this, go, 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 and help to clarify what those next action steps are. And so Again, let's have a conversation. You can head on over to amanda-walker.com forward slash, slash let's chat, L-E-T-S-C-H-A-T, all one word. And I can hear about where your business is, what you're thinking, where you want to go, figure out the gaps and how I can support you. I mean, that's just, you know, one way. But what I really want you to do is think about what this looks like in your business. Are you checking some of those boxes that I mentioned? And just to understand that, I think we come into co two things really to wrap up. Robert Herjavec has this great coach. He's one of the Shark Tank judges and he has this great quote. And he says, basically, find the problem, solve the problem, build the business around it. The struggle with coaching is that most of us are stepping into a coaching capacity because we were so transformed by coaching. We want other people to have that transformation. And so we build the business and we haven't gotten clarity around what it is, what problem we solve. And so because of that, there is a lack of clarity that exists and it bleeds kind of into everything we do. We don't show up like who we want to because we're not really clear. We don't know how to articulate that in a room when we go to a networking event or even to our ideal client. And so we want to make sure that you're clear on the unique problem that you solve and who that person is that you are definitely speaking to. And second is to just understand that this is possible for everyone. And the more you commit to the future of where you want to go and let the past be behind you, you, you may have been chipping away for years and you just haven't had the right mentor or the right thought processes. You've had too many thought errors holding you back. That is of the past. And it's totally uh, appropriate to kind of let that go so that you can move forward into 
what you really vision your business could potentially look like. And so uh, if you've been wrestling with this question, I hope this episode speaks to you. Again, I love and appreciate if you would send it to a friend or a colleague, another coach, if you're in a coaching community and that you think that they would benefit, um, I'd be so grateful for you to post it. Shoot me a screenshot, a DM around what came up for you as you listen to this episode. Uh, and just know you're not alone. Um, many companies will spend, many startup companies will spend literally millions of dollars before they, to, just to invest in the starting of the company before they actually become profitable. And I think coaches have this notion sometimes of we're going to start our business, we're going to find clients and be profitable immediately. And for some that does work who have those clarity and those things dialed in, and maybe they've had some other experience or they invest in mentorship. So it comes pretty rapidly. For others, that might be a longer process. And either way, you're still going to get to the to the finish line. You're still going to get to that destination. Um, and I think figuring out, you know, how much you want to hang out by yourself doing this work versus be in support is really going to help you. Um, will either leave you in more frustration or will help get some of those solutions figured out at a faster rate. And so if you would love some support around that, again, I'd love to connect. And all that information I shared could be will be in the show notes. And keep coaching them up. Keep taking action. And uh, I'm not a unicorn. My clients aren't either. And this is 100% possible for you too.